All right, what's up? We're live. Snuff and Torches, Survivor 46, ep uh, Episode 5 recap. Got me, Nate, Clemmer, and John Rich, which I feel like is probably going to be as full of a crew as we'll get this season. I'm not sure who else is uh, going to be tuning in. Do but we know Jeff five, Lowe, Does Jeff Lowe watch? I think it's tricky because he's in L.A., so I'm not mm. sure if he's able to watch live because he's on the Pacific Coast time. Uh, but our last pre-merge episode, because we saw in the uh, preview for next week, we've got the merge coming next week. Our first, <laughs> you Nate, you can't treat scenes for next week like spoilers. It's a part of the show. It I is. know, but you know I don't watch them, and then you do that. Um, our first uh, episode, BB, uh, and, and, or no, sorry, A A A B. A B uh, yeah, in the post Banu oh. era, like Banu has has died. We can now get on with the show. Um, I thought a better episode tonight. Uh, you know, you get a blind side at the end there of Jem, uh, which I think was the right move for them. I think that she played pretty awfully the last couple of weeks. Uh really just did herself no favors at all. Um, yeah, I'd say a, a pretty solid episode overall in our first. I think that's our first true. Well, I guess Jelinski thought he was blindsided because he was an idiot. But other than that, <laughs> our first true blindside. Yeah. Um, crazy what happens when they focus on gameplay and they have strategy and camp talk and not 80% of the episode on one dude just sobbing. It, it's, it's funny when you see glimpses of the game we once loved and you're like, oh, yeah, this show fucking rocks. Um, the... The under three and a half minutes did cash for first cry, but it was a more justified cry because they yeah. just are starving to death, setting yeah. records for longest without fire and food, and it's pouring rain and everybody's shivering. So a justified cry, and it didn't overpower the episode. They they edited a real episode. Round of applause. It it was it was it was good. I liked it. Yeah, for a, like a post new age or whatever we're calling this new uh, survivor. That was a good Survivor episode. I enjoyed it. It didn't feel like a chore. I actually got to meet some in, some interesting people that we yeah. ignored because we used the Banu show for the first you know, four episodes. Um, well, there are some entertaining and interesting personalities in the island. We wouldn't have known that, but uh, we do now. And uh, I actually kind of enjoyed the hell out of this episode. Yeah, I like it. Was, uh, it's crazy. I mean, everybody but the Banu tribe, Purple... Yanu, sorry, I always forget their names. They, they basically haven't played Survivor this entire season nope. until this episode. Like, this was like, and it was funny how it was like the way like it hit green. Like, I mean, they literally told Jeff not to get ahead of myself. They they were running. He says it being on Survivor is like being at a retreat. So they weren't doing anything. Yeah. They were having, like, the they were just having, they were right. having a blast. Like, yeah, so they finally they, had to play. That was nice. You couldn't have had more polar opposite first 10 day experiences between <laughs> green and purple. Like one was like Survivor is awesome. You're fed, you have fun, you salsa dance, you play in the beach. It's yeah. great. And then purple was just like slivering her way down to nothing. Just just had the worst experience possible. I think they should all be having the experience purple's having. The more I think about it. Like I, I think was that actually gonna like say I think that. I think that there is a benefit to being the worst tribe, at least from a definitely a screen time perspective. Well, and yeah. like you're it's way easier to become an audience favorite when you're on that awful underdog tribe. I mean, the downside is that you're more likely to go home, obviously go to more tribals and that you're literally starving and freezing to death. But other than that, I feel like it is kind of a benefit. Like I and I mean, we've <laughs> talked about this, uh, I feel like last week or something where I now do think that going into the merge with the least tribe is kind of a benefit because you it kind is. of become the swing tribe or you can team up with, uh, you know, the second least tribe. I, so I think there is a benefit to being the least. Obviously it's like, it sucks to, to get through those first 11, 12 days, whatever it is. But if you make the merge, like I think Kenzie Q and, and Tiffany are set up kind of well right now. They got to be the more favorites. At least I think they're like my favorites. Yeah, and now yeah. And, and also you you weed out the shitty players. So like you know half that tribe wasn't that great to be with. So now you have the three strongest members of a tribe that have all sh had the shared experience of horror together, 
And now they all can go into that. Like, like Tommy said, like they're kind of now the they're going to be the people that everybody wants to join there. They, they're in a position of power bizarrely because um, they're going to be the swing votes with the uh, green and uh, orange tribes kind of fighting back and forth. So I think it's a, not a bad spot to be. It's a horrible way to get there, but it's not a bad yeah. spot to be in. Uh, a funny, subtle thing that I hope people notice, you guys noticed, chat noticed, was, it, and it's one of my favorite survivor tropes is, you know, two days in, Jeff will say, so-and-so got voted off the purple tribe. And everybody goes, oh, no way. And they had no idea who the person is. Tonight, when he said, <laughs> Banu voted off the purple <laughs> tribe, everybody goes, yeah. yeah, yeah that that, that one sense. checks out. And I've never <laughs> seen them react like that before. It made me laugh. Yeah, they, they always feign shock, even when it's not shocking. But tonight, there was zero shock. At, yeah. And they still didn't really know him. It, word must have got around the island. And this guy. And I bet you could see him in the challenges yeah. and stuff. <laughs> they, he also had that moment when they went to the journey and he cried and told everyone every single story going on there. So that I think they too, all knew yeah. that he was on the shopping block. <laughs> <laughs> He's the king. I will say, too, we, we need to mention this. I know Jeff said we're, we're not allowed to dislike Banu. And if we do, we don't understand the show. But, uh, you know, the second Banu's gone, Yanu wins. That, I don't think that's an accident. It's probably not a coincidence. No. And I think, I, I think I've said this last week on the show, but, like, going in, not this tribal, the tribal before where they got rid of Banu, like, they should have thrown that to go into that tribal. Like, that was best case scenario for them. I, I think they were losing too hungry. Uh, I don't know. I, I think no, I, I think it was. Like, look at them now. You can always you can always get rid of somebody later on. Never throw a challenge. Yeah. No, you can't. Ba it. Banu, if he made it to the merge, he would have actively like sabotaged them. Like you he, he was he was that, sabotaging he didn't them him out. Like he would have said everything about all of them <laughs> to everybody else in the game, and they would have no secrets. He'd put a giant target on their back, like even like risking keeping him around at all. Like he, I, he, he probably would have pulled up with Cochran in in South Pacific, where he just immediately flipped to like like felt like he was bullied, even though he wasn't, and like flipped to the other tribe. I probably. I think it was Kenzie. Was it Kenzie who was like, we can finally play the game instead of teaching Banu how yeah. to play the game, which like he must have been so insufferable that they couldn't even ignore him. Like they just like had to drag him along uh, we're spent no you know now we're being survivor we're spending too much time talking yeah about no, we're done topic. with bonnet we're done with bonnet let's talk about the episode uh we we started i mean i i kind of felt that green was going to tribal because i feel like they were spending more time on that camp mm -hmm. uh than usual like early on they were talking about um ben kind of being a threat and then he kind of only wanted to talk to charlie the girls were getting afraid of like this all boys thing this is kind of the first it was the episode we've spent the most with this green tribe. What what are your early reads on just like the tribal dynamic before the vote, obviously, because we know what happened. But like, what are your early reads on like players on that tribe to watch? Oh. Um, I really like Maria. I think Maria and Charlie, that bond is, I think, really interesting. Reminds me a little bit. You go way back to season two uh, with Tina and um, what's the the. The handsome blonde hair guy looks like Paul Colby? Walker. Yes, um, those two had like a this like mother son weird relationship, uh, and I feel I'm getting the same kind of vibe in a, in a good way. Like Charlie and Marie have that same kind of vibe, um, where I think they could really do some damage at, under the radar, even post merge. Um, but they're obviously we're calling the shots here, as we saw in the vote. Yeah, I I also I I will say though, I Maria who I've liked. I don't. She used her extra vote tonight for no apparent reason. A brain dead, stupid move. But idiotic. I mean, it doesn't like, make any sense. I went through the not like unless I'm missing something. And help me out, guys. Like, is there was, any reason, any any scenario where that makes sense? Unless they're afraid that Jem had an extra vote or something. Why would she have that? Because they I, thought I, she just, had. Well, I guess she would. They would. She would have had the idol. So they were kind of suspecting her for having something, right? But having the idol doesn't make any sense to play to. It's not I, yeah, I, I know. I, right. I, I mean, they were suspicious of her for general reasons, I feel like. Yeah, I think they they were just like, I mean, you saw it before Tribal where they were listing like this person could have this thing, this person could have this thing. So maybe it was like, let's play it safe. But I feel like if you really went through the numbers, you knew it was uh, Maria. Uh, what's the Charlie? Guy? Charlie, uh, Tim, and Ben were a tight four. You right. knew Ben didn't have a vote, or you know, he kind of implied that he didn't have a vote. 
So it's three to two there. I right. I guess I don't know. Maybe they thought the gem or 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 uh, Mariah. Right there's Maria and Mariah. Maria. Mariah. Mariah is the one we're talking about now. Mariah. Oh. Yeah. Wait. It, I, I just read one quick no. theory on Twitter. No. We're Maria. talking about Maria. Maria is the one that played the extra vote. Right. Mariah, Mariah is, I'm saying is, is the, the other one, one that voted. Right. right, right, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I mean, they should have split those two up in tribes. I, I don't think it's plausible, but just one theory that I just read on Twitter is – using the extra vote to get rid of it so you don't have a target on your back going into the merge that you have an extra vote i oh that's terrible I, that's it's the not, first thing i read the worst thing i mean because it could put a target on your back but i don't know i mean i think if you have only the people you trust know about it i, I or at least you can also it say you played it better. you could because he doesn't read all the votes you could be like i played it i i used my second vote here you know I just think she's yeah, super running her out. She's like, boom, boom. I just really want you out. I'm going to vote for you twice. I think I think that's the she most. She did make thing. everyone really hate her real quick. <laughs> like, she turned it up to 100. And I, I, went, I liked her. Like, I thought she was playing well. And then just instantly it was like, oh, okay, well, she's got to go. Yeah. I thought, I thought Jem, I was I mean, crazy. We talked about it last week, Jem. Her mistake was, um, you know, uh, hiding the idol. Like, just making everybody look for the idol for no reason. Tim, I was going to say credit to Tim who I feel like we haven't heard of, heard from in like a month, but he like was the first one that clearly sniffed out that Jem was up to something because mm -hmm. she was trying to uh, paint the target on him. And he was like, I think Maria, or sorry, I think Jem is lying to me. I think she's got something. He was kind of confronted her about it. So I think that was like a good, a good read by Tim. Yeah. John Rich, um, I was with you. Like they kind of painted this whole arc for her finding the idol and blah blah blah, like losing her vote, getting yeah. it back. And I was like, oh, she's actually playing the game hard. She's I good. Agree. She's getting this great edit, and then she gets it and just goes crazy, paranoid. Doesn't stop chattering and talking and sniffing around. And I was like, what happened to this girl from the first half who was playing her dick off? It was such a one eighty, and like That's really good. quickly happened. She got so nervous to like. And to be that, she just got so nervous, and she had the idol, which is insane. And she had the idol. Like, yeah. But <laughs> also, another thing to watch out for on the Green Tribe. Just gonna throw this out there: Tim hasn't pooped in a long time. Um, a girl was just kicked off of Bachelor in Paradise because she went a certain amount of days without pooping, and it becomes like a health risk. And like they literally just like had to send her home. Question. So maybe some foreshadowing that Tim is gonna go a long time without pooping, and they might have to send him off. They they showed on TV oh. this bachelorette girl just got kicked off for not pooping. Yeah, I'd be horrified if I. Was oh yeah, it was like yeah, that. I mean, imagine like I'm going to the Bachelor for my moment of fame and get kicked off for not pooping. It was unreal. Better than being kicked off for pooping too much. I would what if be. She's a poop machine. I guess. Oh, I feel so bad for her. Uh, that's that's like really mean. Yeah, Why it was she pretty rough. Laxative or something? Do they don't have that on the Bachelor and Par I don't watch this show. But... Uh, I don't know. But just something to watch out for. Oh, speaking of other shows, they showed that really cool commercial for Amazing Race where the guy was scared to go down the stairs and he was quitting. I need someone to like send me that clip or somehow find a way to watch it because I want to see him do it. Because I assume I that show interesting it. too. It also like it must have not been a good angle, but it didn't look that scary. No, it was steep, dude. It was steep. <laughs> they I was just like stairs. It. Yeah, it looked it literally looked like he was afraid to walk downstairs. Great commercial though. Great job hooking me in. Oh hmm. uh, yeah, um, but yeah, Green Tribe. They also they all they keep talking about is how Ben is like so charismatic and funny. He seems fine to me. I don't no, know. <laughs> they're talking about Ben. Me. Yeah, they're talking about Ben like he's like the most amazing guy in the world. I mean, again, it's different seeing him for a few minutes on a TV screen versus I'm sure being on the island with him. But I just found it funny when they were like, "Ben, he's just so char." Like who? So I don't know who. Somebody called him the most charming person that she's ever met. Yeah, that was uh, Mariah, I believe, called him that. Yeah, um, he fits in with that group. I didn't, I didn't like his Ozzy Osbourne reference. He's going too hard with the music shit. Now. All he does is these music, like eighties yeah, and nineties like, rock band, like references. Congrats. It's, it's a like lot. Eighties music. He mentioned living in a van, eating Taco Bell and stuff too. So he was probably in a band that traveled. Yeah, he was in a van. I mean, he he does seem cool. Like I typed his name into Twitter, like Ben sur hashtag Survivor. Girls love him. There's a yep. few like come over and do me Ben tweets and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, horny Survivor Twitter loves Ben. Do you know how old Ben is? 
31? I don't know if he's that into what you. Is that? John Rich. I got my I got my cast up here. He's 31. Oh. <laughs> I'm I honestly would have thought he was older. Yeah, me too. All the like old rock. I thought he was like my, like his my age because he's naming all the bands I grew up with. Also, uh, if you're interested, bencapsmanshreds.com is his website. Huh. So maybe I'll please. check that out. No, check out um, some websites before. But yeah, I thought that keeping him instead of Jem, I mean, made sense. Obviously, like we know it because Jem had the idol. They don't know that. But so I think that a guy being likable and pleasant to be around doesn't make him like an immediate threat. Like I feel like pre-merge, I want to keep people who I can trust. I mean, yeah, the other tribe may like Ben. He might be an affable guy, but I don't think that means he's somebody that you can't trust. I think Jim sh showed more untrustworthy characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't even know the most untrustworthy thing she did. I don't think they, she hit, she hit the idol. You know, she <laughs> yeah. did that thing with the idol. Do they even know she did that. Cause when they find that out, I bet they'd be happy to vote her off. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're going to be like, fuck yeah. Like that was a great decision by yeah. us. Uh, We'll, we'll talk more about them a little bit, but let, let's go to Orange Tribe. I mean, not much from them because, kind of like we said, uh, they you know these other tribes keep winning. But Hunter does find the uh, finds the beware advantage today. Everybody's looking except for Liz, who is just a useless lump on a log <laughs> sitting there. Uh, she's she's not as bad as Bonnie, but I actually think Liz. I'm going to end up kind of enjoying in how useless she is, like in a in a comedic mm -hmm. laugh at her way. Yeah, I agree. She's horrible. I, I didn't like the way I Hunter. Is. I didn't like the way Hunter was treating Venus. I'm I'm glad. I, I want Venus to come out of that tribe more than anybody else. The, but, it is uh, crazy how much they hate on Venus for no reason. Well, she was being annoying. A little. He's looking for an idol, and she's like talking about nothing with him. He's like, all right, I'm trying to do. This. I'm gonna say this right now. Hunter might be the best survivor player in Survivor history. I am all in on Hunter. What? I'm throwing all my chips in the table here. I am, I am, I'm a hunter. He doesn't fan even know the logos in order. Oh, yeah, logos suck. You would be good at. I, I'm bad with logos. I would, I would struggle worse. What's the than name of the seasons. I, I struggle with that. It's not how I look at things. It's not how I, I'm. He's. I, I completely understand how you would screw that up. I yeah. hunter. I'm all in a hunter. I liked hunter because so he wins the challenge and they're all like doing their gay little huddle, bouncing up and down, chanting, and he can't even fake to be into that kind of thing. He's like just kind yeah. of standing there like this. And it's like he doesn't do the camp songs. He he's there to build shelters, hunt, win challenges. That doesn't always make a great survivor. I don't think his social game will be good enough. It he doesn't seem to under like he shouldn't have acted towards Venus that way. He just doesn't have the greatest social game. But the whole time everybody's been so disrespectful to her. Maybe that's just part of the course. <laughs> he but was, I, he I don't think he had tried like they all got together, like, hey, we're the strongest yeah. guys. And he was like, Yeah, like he he was willing to sign up for that. I'm I'm a big hunter. I'm a I'm I really like Hunter a lot. So yeah, I'm very sad to be this at home. We can just talk about that now. Like that after the challenge, uh, they go to the whatever journey. It's kind of the biggest guys from each tribe, Hunter, Tim, and Q. And they say I, it was a good idea, I think, from Q, where he was like, "Look, we're the three biggest physical threats. Uh, they're going to come for us." You know, it's kind of the meat shield strategy. We've seen Tony, Jeremy do it, where it's you know, you're the lions. You don't want the hyenas to come in there, especially you know, in in these new seasons, there's so few physical threats where you really do stand out. When you've got the Liz's and the Mariahs and the Banus of the world, like if you have any sort of like even any of us four might look like physical threat and eh, not quite but like you know th oh, those yeah. three are you know especially q and hunter i think going to be targeted so i i kind of i don't know why i liked it so much or it but it was just such a simple way of like yeah just each get one person and all of a sudden you have pretty much the majority and q is tight with tiff hunter hunter said he would i i thought i heard this but i was like did i mishear that hunter said he was going to bring liz tevin Tevin. Oh, yeah, it was Tevin. Okay, it was Tevin. He's really and remember if we saw well, before the whole Banu takeover, yeah, yeah, we yeah. saw there was a lot of Tevin Hunter, like they seem to get along really well. Yeah. And then uh Tim and Ben are a are a duo. Um but yeah, I, I think that maybe that was a little foreshadowing. I mean, I thought Q that was like an impressive game. I like as much as you like Hunter, I'm all in on Q. I love Q. I'm I'm with you there. Those two guys, I'm I'm all, this is why I'm I'm not we were talking early today in the office, like how this season's been rough so far. 
I'm not that fatalistic for the long term because our, there's some players left that I really like. Q was so happy to just talk to different people. Yeah. Like, I feel like he, he is that he hates that camp. I don't even think he hates the. Like, I mean, he doesn't like Kenzie. He obviously gets along with Tip, but I just think he he's so sick of being in that tribe. I feel like he was just so excited to talk to anybody else and like think about something for the future. I got concerned he was quitting early in the episode. Yeah. He's like talking to Kenzie. He's like, yeah, I think I'm going to quit. I was like, oh, no. Like, how could my read be so <laughs> off on enough. you? But he said it was kind of just a strategic move because he didn't want Kenzie to use a shot in the dark. So that was smart by him. I don't know if I bought that. I think he was saying that to cover his ass. I think he wanted to quit. He was down. He, he was down bad on, like, everything. Do you, That's it, what happens when Bono goes. You miss yeah. Bono. <laughs> Bono will kill you. Yeah, like, I that would – the strategy makes sense though, and I don't know. Like, yeah. can you be that good of an actor out there? Like, and Q is ne- Q's not a quitter. We know that he, he like the the bucket challenge and all that, and Q's whole personality revolves around not quitting. I think he's next level strategy. That's what I, it would be crazy if it wasn't. Yeah, I kind of believed him too. Maybe maybe that's naive, oh. but I gotta say about Yanu a little bit. So, like, I think the producer set them up to fail, or Jeff did. Because we forget, I, I forget at least about Jelinski. You had Jelinski and Banu on the same tribe. Like that's Jelinski, not, you know, is a pretty like was a pretty athletic guy. But he's a tra- he's a train wreck personality. Yeah, like, fair. They, they put uh, that tribe was never. You could replay this season ten times, and every single time it's going to end up the same way. I think. I think Yanu gets destroyed. And, every so, single so, time. about Jess too. Jess yeah, Jess was anything. the worst maybe. And, Jess, and Jess is a nothing. Like that tribe was set up to fail, which is they got to do a better job, both. Or do you think they do like that was... intentionally? Do you think they like having a pathetic tribe? I, I'm starting to wonder Jeff if they do, because it happens every season. Yeah. That's, like kind, that's why I yeah. kind of believe that Q actually wanted to quit, because it's like they just dealt him like such a bullshit hand that I'd be like, all right, like, fuck you guys. Like, I just have to do everything. Nothing matters. We're just the only tribe who has to be miserable. Like, I don't think he ever actually wanted to, but there's always a part of you that thinks that shit when you're. It, it is interesting now to think about. Did they put Q on a tribe with the biggest losers possible for this exact story? Like, can they be so sure that these people are going to be so bad at the game and Q is going to be so awesome? Like, how can they be that sure? But if they are, then they did a great job getting exactly what they wanted, even though it was terrible for us. I don't I don't think they knew that. I, oh, I, I think they did. They, these people take think psychological tests. Positive, though. They, take every, they take all these tests. They know exactly what they're looking for when they cast a show. And they know exactly what they're doing when they set these tribes up. There's a reason you don't pick your own tribe. You think they knew that the tribe would be that bad and would make Q look great? I don't know about making Q look great, but they knew they were going to... It might have been. I mean, they put Banu and Jelinski on the same tribe. They cast them on this show, which is fucking insane. Like, there's also, like... There's also, you know, Liz. Like, there's a lot of pathetic characters. Yeah, I don't you know, could man. sub out a handful of people and have the same effect. And, I mean, you would we, switch we Hunter and Q, before, and I think the same thing would have played out. I also think it is easier to have so many bad tribes because of the new era where, like, losing that first tribe or tribal or, or challenge or two really fucks you because you don't get flint. You don't get flint. So then you're behind with fire, with food, right. with fuel. So it's kind of like a snowball effect where it really is. Un- like, just give them fucking flint. Who cares? I don't care. No, yeah. I don't care either. Give him matches for all I care. Yeah. I also, I don't think Q's as big as a physical threat as he should be. He's constantly I mean, behind Hunter, and he lost, and he was behind, he lost ground to, what's his name? Um, oh, Tim? Tim, to Tim. Tim I, I will say Hunter is a superhero, though, so that's and, not really and fair. Q but just eat food. Q, Q, for playing football at Ole Miss, like, Q play wide receiver for Ole Miss. He should be more he should be a bigger physical threat than he is. I mean, he also like was starving for eleven days. It's probably true. Yeah. Starving. Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't. I keep thinking he's about to like dominate. And then it's like, oh, he didn't really dominate there. Yeah. I, I. I mean, he got kind of, I guess, his moment um, of like getting the last right slow mo. You know, I mean, not that he knew, but slow mo shot of knocking down the last slingshot. Uh, kind of funny when Jeff kind of being a, being a sassy bitch at the start of the challenge when he was like. <laughs> Uh, I thought you guys were going to say Yanu there, like losers going to tribal. Um, I'm so sick of Jeff at challenges. So sick. 
See that I, I still kind of like Jeff and Jalen. Like I, I'm still fine with Jeff as a host. It's Jeff as the executive producer that I'm. You at. could replace him with like a Jeff Probst app and just hit like <laughs> five of his songs. <laughs> like that is Yanni's true. really struggling. Like the doll with the string. You gotta dig deep. Yeah, it's it's with the same shit. I'm about to mute it when it comes on. Yeah. Hi, they are not out of it. Anything <laughs> yeah. can happen in this game. <laughs> I want to make that app now just to have it. Yeah, it's like a soundboard. Remember that yeah. soundboard? It was like something Ed. Special Ed soundboard. I remember that. I, I remember ball like ball Homer ball Simpson ball. ones and like things. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used that. I don't know Special Ed. Like, um, uh, all right, let's see what else. So, yeah, the journey. Uh, so, we talked about the possible alliance forming. Then it was one person had to go up, test their survivor knowledge. Q, it seems like, doesn't really maybe know the show that well because he was like, I'm not, you guys are going to be better than me, unless he was using that as kind of a move, but it seemed genuine. Uh, Tim, I think, would have been good, but he was like, I don't want to risk losing my vote tonight, which I think is understandable. Uh, so Hunter does it. It's He gets 20 logos with the season names on it. Uh, you know, Pearl Islands, Guatemala, et cetera. He's got to put them in order. I think this is one of those things where if you, if you know it, it's the easiest thing. Like, I, I think I would have done that as fast as humanly possible. I saw a lot of people <laughs> online. Like, if you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you don't. Like, he did a pretty good job, I think, of using deductive reasoning. It looked like, I mean, I was shocked he only had eight. I thought I was going to have a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it's one of those things where you either get it immediately or you don't get it at all. I have a question about that whole thing. So, do we see Hunter go back to his tribe? I don't think we did, did we? I don't think so either. So yeah. I'm curious what he told them when he went back. Did he tell them that he lost his vote? Or what was – I feel like we never saw that. Unless yeah, I we didn't. missing something. Weird. We'll probably do it next it, Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it, he already doesn't have a vote because of the beware advantage. So how's that work? That's a great question. Maybe he'll – so maybe he won't have a – well – the merge, you get further instructions after the merge. Remember they said that when he read right. it. Um, so I'm guessing he would get so maybe the next tribe will have it, he'll have an idol, but he won't have a vote. Huh. If he gets the idol. Right. I'm trying to find an answer. It's just mostly people asking the question. Sorry, this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> so, like he he's he lost his vote twice. Like, come on. Yeah, someone's like, can't lose a vote if you never had a vote. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for, for <laughs> him, it was definitely a worthy risk. But he didn't even mention that. They didn't mention that at all. I think they're the embarrassed. Probably, they probably realized they fucked up and are just trying to blow past it. Definitely, or how they yeah. won't notice. Just keep it moving. I saw we made it so confusing, they won't even notice. <laughs> yeah. A very important message in the chat from E. Hoskin 80. He said, Clemmer versus Tim in Texas Poop Hold'em. Mm. Text hold him an idol. I said this is a game we should play at Barstool. We just try to hold in your shit for as long as possible. I only went four days, so Tim would annihilate me. I I can't imagine going ten days without shitting. Yeah. That... Thanks, Clemmer. Yeah. It, 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 it was a good point. It was a good point. Someone in the chat said it. That's important. I, <laughs> you, you did stop the show to tell us you didn't poop for four days. It was a contest. <laughs> I won. Robbie Fox didn't come for 19 days if we're talking about holding in. Uh, functions. What's more impressive? Ten days without pooping. Nineteen days without coming. Oh, 10 days up. Oops. Wait. Okay, so this this bachelorette girl, <laughs> she didn't poop in nine days. Told her she had to get her ass home. People don't poop in survival. Remember we had on... It's, it's, not, hot to, it's not hot when she's bloated. It's bad for TV. It's I'm just saying, eventually, show. if he doesn't poop, watch out. I, that could be foreshadowing. We had on someone who was on Survivor, and he said he pooped like twice the whole time he was on the island. On this show. Is that not Mike? Either. Yeah. I believe it was Mike. Did he say he only pooped like two or three times a whole yeah. time? Like, you just don't poop very much. I think Rob C., Rob Sesternino, he talked about, like, I I mean, it makes sense. Like, you just don't poop if... Uh, you don't eat. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but yeah, Hunter, I mean, I don't know. They fucked that up, and they'll probably <laughs> just make something up, uh, like a new rule along the way. Unless he loses his vote twice. I don't, I don't know how they'll do it. That'd be crazy. Um, but then, yeah, you know, the Green Tribe, it was... You know, so Charlie and Marie are kind of in the driver's seat there. Uh, there's the potential all girls plus Charlie alliance, but then you also have Charlie getting closer to Ben and Tim. Uh, you know, being weary of Jem. If you are Marie, I mean, we kind of talked about it, but if you're Marie and Charlie there, what do you think the right move is? I think they made the right move. 
Yeah, she was. Jem was becoming too chaotic. You, when you still have that many people left, and there's somebody who just like everyone's in agreement with is annoying as shit. I feel like you do that at first. It's like the first one you get rid of. It seemed to make sense. I don't think it would have been bad to go Ben, but like. Yeah, and no, what's he, his name? Tommy, you said it earlier. He kind of was on to her. He Tim, kind of Tim, yeah. out. They maybe they didn't show it, but you have to assume that he told them, right? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was. I like the editing, and it made you think that the bros were might have to turn on each other because he was like, "Yeah, you can't play with the mo-. like talk." Who is he talking to? Taking the walk, but uh, Maria. they ended up not having to stab a bro in the back. Yeah, yeah, and they, you machetes versus hammers with yeah. uh, Gem and uh, Gem and Ben. <laughs> that was not yeah, too. They just wielded they them down machete. their very violent weapons. Yeah. Oh, she and then playing, so she was playing too hard. I mean, we see it every season. There's always one person who plays way too hard, and they're out very early. <laughs> yeah. For it, Gem, she had to. So this was their first time going to tribal. So she had the beware advantage so to unlock getting the hidden immunity idol. She had to go measure a bunch of perimeters with the machete. Put it in a math equation. I, I hated that. I just hated it. It was so I, I, easy. That was so well. I it, so it looked. It, it was, sounded a lot harder than I think. Yeah. It was. Like when yeah. I was reading that, I was like, "Oh my god, this is gonna be impossible." <laughs> no. But I don't know. To me, like, and I know it's the beware advantage, so it is beware. But it is still supposed to be an advantage. Like you're, you don't want to really penalize people for looking for something and finding it. Yeah. I just think that taking you away from your tribe in the limited amount of time you have between losing a challenge and tribal council and you know you gotta <laughs> waste your time fucking measuring a boat with a with a machete like i just think that that is so unfair yeah i'm good i'm kind of out on beware advantages altogether oh i've hated like, them i just i just better. do something new it's the same thing the advantage is it's never like a fun cool thing they have to do it's just like kind of waste five minutes watching them put together some easy ass equation or look for something and then there was I do have one time I thought it was kind of interesting is when they remember they had to get jewelry they had to get the beads yeah yeah, yeah that, that was might good. Be right. interesting discussion but like her measuring stuff you could easily so do easy. that it was so quick to measure that sign was too machete yeah when she did the two she's like one two all right, yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> wow. what are we like, doing yeah, that, that's what it felt stupid to me. It it wasn't enough where it's, they've had stuff like buried under camp before where you can't do it without your tribe being aware that you're up to no good. I think that's what they wanted, obviously, is like make people suspicious by making them do something weird around camp. Yeah. That wasn't really it. Well, she was lucky because they everyone went to look for idols. Like if – if she would have had fact, to only took machete, if she just would have had to like take the machete from somebody. That could have been interesting. Bro, I, yeah. I didn't think it was. Hands. You don't even need the machete. Just take your hands. That's a good and go point. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the machete think, kind of like, pointless. <laughs> I think it was not a bad move for her to be like, you know, let's just all look for the idol, like because she no. needed to get get away. So I think that kind of worked. Yeah. I mean, it might have made her look a little bit more suspicious, maybe. But like, she worked. had to do something to explain why she was walking away, taking the machete, measuring things. It was the one smart thing she did all episode. Was yeah. that move? Um, yeah. It looked like, I don't know if it was Ben or Tim. Someone kind of gave her a look, but I don't know if that was just editing because nobody really mentioned it otherwise. I mean, yeah, it worked for her. Like, clearly, nobody, people were suspicious of her, but they weren't suspicious that she had the idol. But maybe no. having the idol, like, just made her. I feel like people were just, in general, like, she's had weird, she has weird behavior. But they didn't know quite what was up, but it was because she had the idol. It's weird because the way she was acting, like you would think, like she was acting what seemed like nervous. And you'd think she's only nervous because, like, she might think she's on the block. But then she just didn't use the idol. So, like, if there was really, like, a complete blind side, then, like, what was she, like, freaking out about? Just the vote in general? I, I don't know. There's, there's, her, her actions just, like, didn't add up. I think she just really didn't want people to know she had the idol. Like, she went too crazy... I mean, it, you know, it, it starts to beg the question, you know, are, is it better to tell someone about the idol, Tr- tell someone you trust and then bounce ideas off them and make, you know, them trust it. I'm still very much team. Don't tell anybody that you have the idol, but yeah. there could be a benefit. There could be a benefit to, it, or maybe it would have made her act a little less erratic. She could have got like an act. She didn't really have an ally. She could have got like a real ally out of that. 
I was gonna say, I think really her biggest issue was her social game. She just didn't seem yeah. like she really had any connections with people. She had like a very superficial on the surface, like all girls alliance with Mariah, Maria, and then Charlie brought in. But I mean, again, we don't see everything. And it was, you know, 12 days. But yeah. from what we saw, I feel like she she just didn't really connect with anyone. Whereas, you know, it, that is, it kind of proves the whole thing at the end of the day, Survivor is a social game because Charlie and Ben, over the last few days, they were forming this rapport, this relationship, this friendship. And at the end of the day, Charlie was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with him instead of voting for Mariah. Or sorry, for Jim. Yeah. Uh, any other thing? Anything else from the episode you think we missed topic wise? Um, Trial wasn't much. No. It was a good blind side. Like, I thought. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. But like the bet, whatever, the, the pre vote, nothing. No. Crazy. Very. Which is actually just shows smart gameplay. Like they yeah. kept their cards pretty close to the best. My favorite, I said this earlier when they told Jeff that being at Survivor is like being on a retreat. I enjoyed yeah. that. I, I like when Jeff gets brought down a peg in that manner. Yeah, like you couldn't have loved a monster. That. It's like, no, we're in a, we're 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 in Cabo. <laughs> do you, yeah. Do you guys really. think it's weird or do you think they will continue this storyline of Q saying he's going to quit? Or do you think they just, that no. was a minute? No, I think that was a one-off. I think I, he's I don't good want, now. They got not at the merge. No, he's revitalized now. If, any, if, either, if it was or wasn't a bluff, either way, he'll be happy now at the merge. Yeah, I just thought it was like such a weird thing to edit into the show that will never have future repercussions. I think he was just venting. I think they were just like, this is how down bad this guy is. He's Do you think that happens quick. often and they just don't show it? People are like, I'm done. I want to get out of here. And I'm it's sure. just them venting and they just happen to show this one. Maybe. Q's an interesting guy to say it because you don't expect it. So that was an interesting cut. And maybe it's supposed to make him look more strategic too because then he ends up yeah. being like, hey, it was a strategy move. Um, yeah, I don't know. But so merge next week. It, it didn't really show if there's going to be like a uh extinction hourglass or anything like that but there's 13 oh. people you got five, but it feels like there's gonna be because 13 is big for a merge so you got uh I, i'd imagine they do like two teams of six one outcast who gets to choose which side they back and then like one goes to tribal some shit like that uh going in you got the three from purple in Q, Tiff, and Kenzie, I feel like they're going to stick together as a tight three. You have the Orange Tribe, where that's Hunter, Soda, Liz, Venus, and Tevin. We really don't know those tribe dynamics. They haven't had a vote yet. You see kind of some alliances, but that, I really, I think they're maybe just going to like try to stick together because it's like they have no reason to not stick together. And then the Green Tribe, you have Charlie and Maria, who are obviously close. Ben and Tim, who are close, who now might form a foursome. But now you've kind of got Mariah on the outs because she was left out of the vote for Jem. So, you know, yeah. now is she kind of a free agent go, going into this, being like, I was just left out of this tribe. So interesting dynamics. What what who do you what who do you think is going to team up? What tribes or, or people do you think are most likely to team up? Purple probably sticks together. Or tries to. Q seem, Q will turn on someone, though. Q wants to get rid of Kenzie. I think Kenzie, Q wants yeah. to He's been plotting Kenzie Kenzie's demise for, like, three episodes now. But he just keeps having ding-dongs get in his way that he has to get rid of instead. I, I'm excited for Merge Q. I think he's going to put on a show. I hope so, at least. I think the Nami tribe is a bit more separated than you said, Tommy. Like, Tevin, Hunter, and Soda, I think, are pretty tight three. Where I think Venus and Liz. No, but they were starting. They were starting to doubt. They, last episode, Soda. I think they were starting to not like Soda. Yeah, Soda's becoming a lot. I, I I wonder if with a merge and more people around, that maybe that will gel again. Or at the end, at the end of the day, we know Hunter and Tevin at least are tight, um, and we know that uh, Venus is on the outs. So maybe <laughs> Venus and Mariah could team up and then join the Yanu tribe. I, I I'm just kind of like looking at who the free agents yeah. could be. It's not, it's not, I, I, I wonder if it's just going to be a basic, like there's two tribes of five and they're like, all right, we got to compete for these other three. But then Probably. maybe you get some flipping where it's like Venus is like, actually, I want to vote with you guys. And Mariah's like, I actually want to vote with you guys. Or it could just be all out chaos too. Yeah. 
I just uh, I hope I, you, you're right, but I really hope they don't do that thing with the fucking outcast or the six. Just have a fucking merge. Like I, they're gonna this. do that for sure. You're right. I know. I know. Um, yeah, the mer- the merge. It's better with the merge. Let's do it earlier. No one's gonna be mad about merging. I wish it would have merged I, this week. I thought it. I thought it was dumb to have just three people in a tribe when other tribes got six, and then half the players aren't even playing the challenge. And it, and I it guess fully affected the challenge too. Yeah. I guess this is when they've been merging in the past seasons at 13, but for some reason, this pre-merge just felt really quick. Maybe it's because it was so Banu and just pathetic uh, yeah. Yanu tribe dominated, but I feel like going into merge, like, I don't, I mean, all right, let's, you want to each give, let's each give top three winner picks, top three people that you think uh-huh. can win. I'm going to go Tiffany. I still like Tiffany's uh, chances. Um, let me see what I have. Let's see who else. Uh, just thinking in my head here. I think Tevin has a chance. I don't know. Now, actually, no, I think he's gonna, he's like too much sometimes. I think. (laughs) All right, Tommy. (laughs) What? (laughs) He's just too much sometimes. I think, I think he's gonna like. (laughs) He's outspoken. Like I could see him saying something that rubs people the wrong way. Sassy, uh, if you will. I think I think Tevin a hundred billion percent has a chance. I think Charlie definitely has a chance. Charlie and Maria. And what? Charlie and Maria. And, I think both have a really good chance. And I'm going to go by a hundred for my third. And Q, Q, Charlie, Tevin. That's my three. As much as I want to say Hunter and Q, I just worry that they're too big of physical threats. Yeah. Hunter's is, social Hunter, game. Is Hunter too Ozzy shitty. 2.0? Like a smarter Bo- version of Ozzy? But boring version. I just don't think like I we can't throw obvious. that tag on him yet. He hasn't we haven't really seen him do much in challenges. Ozzy to me is so overrated. I like Hunter more than Ozzy. I don't know. I, I Ozzy was always so overrated. I, I was always on the side of Ozzy was a little overrated, but Ozzy was an undeniable like challenge monster. Like Hunter hasn't like done like he hasn't won. They haven't had any yet, but like he, he hasn't, hasn't had win. Yeah, everything he does, he wins. Okay, no, he he been, he's got to win quite a like, few individual immunity bro, just before when he gets Ozzy to was dominating. He was free willy in the water, and they had these awesome six shots of him, and they just like they did such a good job framing him. Even I mean, he he dominated on his own, but they did such a good job on the show, really showing how awesome he was. And I think that's that's why maybe you think he's overrated, but I don't. I think he's perfectly rated because they showed him for like such a beast that he is yeah i think ozzy was like the ultimate when i mean you cannot respect that part of the game as much like the challenges and stuff but he is like the ultimate challenge person ever like yeah i'm i'm really high on my guy hunter I, i'm gonna i'm gonna ride the hunter train off. like i, yeah, I, I, mean, I, really, I, really, I mean i think hunter has potential but like he hasn't I feel like we're anointing him. He hasn't really done anything yet. It's like a, a he also hop, hop socially pick. he hates everyone there too much. Like he hates everybody. Survive except for I guess if he, can get, if he gets with Q, maybe makes him hate things a little bit less to have like somebody he can relate <laughs> to. But I as he's just such a dominant threat, and his social game seems pretty rough. That those are the people who they don't they haven't made them. I've never seen one of those guys win. It's rare. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's why I think Maria has a better chance of winning than than Hunter does. I agree. Um, Marie, if you said I had to pick one person who would win, gun to my head, I would say Maria right now. Yeah, maybe I'm just I, I maybe have too bad a recency bias where I'm just really judging her for using that extra vote tonight. But that was rough. She, I I have been impressed with her. Wait, Clemmer, I I'm a DraftKings man. I would like to bet you on DraftKings that gun to my head zero percent. Zero percent on Maria. I'm as confident that she's. I mean, I'm. T- I guess I'm taking the field, and Clemmer is taking her. But I, I just, I don't think she's gonna win. I think she's gonna fizzle out quick. Well, I mean, I think. I mean, we're one in thirteen chance. So right. It's just yeah, but like I would never put win. her in my. I, I wouldn't put her in my top five, six, seven. Oh, that's crazy to me. Oh, she's oh, top she's half definitely at least. There. This is this is where I'm different. Why? I call, I call what, Gabler what, what, wins. What's, well, but like, give me a reason why. Like, why are you so against Maria? It's, 
it's just one of those editing things and just the mistake tonight and the game. I just don't think it's all I, but I guess, in, I know we go back and forth about this. Like you don't need to be the perfect player in today's day and age to win. Maybe she's, I, I don't she's see her the way you winning. guys are talking about her. It, it, it It's harder to predict than ever. Who's going to like old seasons by the merge. I feel like I could 90 with 95% confidence, give you like three or four people and one of them would win. Now it is a lot harder because it feels like people win by accident. Like it just feels like people like there's so many twists and turns and idols and advantages where like having a lockdown alliance and being a good social player and that doesn't mean you're going to win. It it really is like, I think a lot, a lot more luck than it ever used to be. So I don't know who you could end up with someone like fucking Mariah winning. It's like, how the fuck did Mariah win? Like, well, she just ended up winning somehow. <clears throat> Who is our friend from 41, a Canadian woman who... Erica. Okay, Erica. No, I'm thinking of the next one. Um, Marianne. 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 Oh, Worst don't... winner in Survivor history. Yeah, I mean, agree. Eric, they both won by accident. Like, they both stumbled into winning. Erica, they gave no edit to. Marianne, they gave the most annoying edit in the world to. And then Gabler wins, who you guys all gave zero percent chance, and I, I which is fair, and I'd go back, I'd give him zero percent chance again. <laughs> yeah, he remember what was he doing? Lifting weights or holding on to holding on to something, and he's just rattling off. Shout out Montana! Shout out yeah, to yeah, I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Putting palm fronds on people in the middle of the night. Waking <laughs> they them were up. Cold. That, that was the funniest. Days. That was the best Gabler moment. <laughs> Covering <laughs> people with palms. I the still Gabler. Gabler won. Um. <laughs> We okay, underrate that Tommy, season. No. I was say, Tommy, I think you said Tiffany. I think Tiffany is like by far and away my number one right now. Yeah. It's like she kind of fits the mold of a recent winner, but she's she's better than that. Like she's smart and she's very good at challenges. She seems to be like perfectly under the radar. And then I, I almost just want to pick Q, Tiffany, and Kenzie because I feel like Yanu's going to win. I feel like Yanu has a really good chance of winning this just with one of them they kind of got that jam jam carolyn and uh uh what was the other guy's name carson feel from from a couple seasons ago it was yeah like three i agree misfits tiffany's um, social game is really good too she doesn't tiffany's get too rattled she doesn't oh, get yeah. along with everybody I, yeah. I think tiffany's a really sharp pick yeah like no People, one's like she's in just her with yanni like no one's even considering voting her out like, no, that's there's both. He was calling the shots on Tiffany's side. Yeah, she's she's in charge right now. People you think have no shot to win? I mean, Liz has zero point zero. Liz is Liz is the worst. Liz she honestly it. might like if she gets the final three, she might be like, "Don't vote for me. I'm so rich. Like, check out my website." So <laughs> Venus has no chance. No chance. She has no <sighs> chance. Yeah. People don't like her. I mean, that, I mean, it's not I fair. That, but I think you're right. There, you're, you're there, right. there hasn't been a scene with Venus where they're not mean to her. Even after yeah. they win a challenge, they bully her. It, no, so... we had we had she made a friend who was immediately kicked off the show <laughs> five minutes later. She had a real nice scene with that guy. Yeah, uh well uh Randon. Randon. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think Soda could win. She also seems to just be annoying people, but she's kind of got Marianne vibes too. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I didn't know <laughs> if we were allowed to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mariah, I feel like should have no chance to win, but who knows? She could win. Um, no, she's got to be on my zero. Mariah's got to be. I wouldn't say zero, but I wouldn't give Ben a very good chance to win. I was going to say that too, yeah. Hmm. I think in all of Survivor, there's never been more of a zero than Venus is right now. Like <laughs> She she's, is. She's up relentlessly against just kicked in the head every episode. I'm it trying to think like, like they she ahead. must be annoying or something on that. Like there's got to be something we're not. Yeah. Seeing. I'm trying to think like who I'm trying to like picture like who could she like hook up with. I would almost say Hunter, but Hunter already hates her. Like maybe <laughs> I was thinking just Yanu tribe. Just jump over with them. You maybe? Yeah, ma maybe Yanu. Like they that actually right her, her and Kenzie. Kenzie's also hot. Maybe she's not threatened. Oh, you meant like hook up like a line with that. You talked about literally hook up with. Oh, you're <laughs> such an idiot. Oh, like, you could hook up. Or you could hook up. He's hot. 
<laughs> no, I just meant like like what like group would even like be accepting of this? Jesus. But Tommy. you're right, maybe Tommy's the worst. He really is. He just is the worst. What a pervert this guy is. Not, I mean, Talk he phrased it weirdly. No, he didn't. No. You you Who heard it weirdly. With? I was like, you're oh, a weird Q's, person. Q's got washboard abs. She's hot. They could hook up. You just want to fuck Q. <laughs> if she hooks up with all this is, you just want to fuck Q. If Venus oh. gets in a showman this season, <laughs> you guys owe Tommy an apology. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, <laughs> all right. That's just about it. Do you guys got anything else you want to add? Uh, what? Who's your uh, jib cut of the week? Oh, sorry. Yeah, jib cut of the week. Um, I like the cut horse? of Tim's jib this week. I liked Tim first, like, calling out Jem, knowing that she was lying. Yep. And then also I thought that not – volunteering to do the challenge at the journey because he wanted his vote was smart too and you know he ends up on the right side of the vote my jib cuts for q uh for coming up with that idea to have the three strong guys all like merge together when they were on that journey it made the journey actually productive instead of just you know someone crying yeah. or just nonsense so q um I guess I, I think my number one pick would be Q too, but I like Charlie this week too. He didn't do that much, but he's just, just like, he's, maybe a, he's maybe a little annoying sometimes. I kind of agree, but like I think he's got a really good hold on that tribe. And I think he, people he seem to really like reason. him, and and he played. He was kind of caught in the middle of something there, but seemed to navigate it perfectly. Jem doesn't go home without Charlie. Charlie made right. that play. That's yeah, all on Charlie. Okay, yeah, he 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 figured that out. He's he's in charge there. I was him and Maria. I was gonna give my jib cut to Charlie as well. I thought he had a strong presence on the TV today. He made the strategic move. I think I poo pooed him in episode one. I said, ah, get that guy out of here. But I like him now. Char I'm a Charlie stand now, as they would say. Uh, all right. I think Venus it. should definitely hook up with him. I don't. Yeah. You should hook up with Q. You should hook up with Q. Yeah, sure. Does Charlie want to hook up with Venus or want to hook up with Q? With I don't. I think that's a Charlie good question. Is that's what you're getting at. That's a good question. I don't speculate about such matters. Yeah, we, we don't do that on this show, Clummer. Come on. <laughs> um, that's it for Snuff and Torches. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, download all that stuff. Uh, we will see you guys next week.